And so, dear friends and family, sorry about that, I got cut off um, from the phone. But my concern always is the dignity and honor in my country. And I was addressing this part about Mr. Harmon. You know, how long would any of us live? Ladies and gentlemen, how long will we live? What um, are we leaving to our future generation? What uh, would the generation carry for? What, what would history carry our name in? When we do these kinds of things, and trying to create crisis in our country, instead of winning the hearts and mind, Mr. Harmon, and those of your grouping who are bent on this way of behavior, I'm talking to you as a professional Guyanese in love with this country and in love with all our people. Why? Where will it take us? What will happen in our nation? What will be the world's opinion about us as a set of despotic people? For example, in Bobis, we know, everybody knows, that there is more in the pestle than the mortar. That there is more in what's going on in that yesterday, Sunday, the fourth uh, criminal behavior. Not that's not protest, Guyanese, and Mr. Mr. Harmon. That is not protest. That was criminal behavior, burning the roads with tires. That's hundreds of thousands, maybe some millions. Inconveniencing people caused people to miss their, their jandy. Yes, there was Sunday prayers day to miss their prayers and so on. Where, where, where do you think this will take you? To do a jandy? It's a very costly thing. People have to wait for a special day in Sanat and Dharma or Hinduism. They must have planned the whole year for the event. So, it's not right. And those guys who are doing these things will end up getting in trouble. Sooner or later, they will be picked up. Uh, and the best time to pick them up is not when they are in the frenzy of the madness, but pick them up when they go home. Because rioters and strikers are people that carry one mental faculty and thought as if they are linked together. That is how the psychology of understanding how these things go. So the best time for police to arrest them is when they disperse and they go home. Yeah, where that Burbese thing was concerned yesterday, uh, Saturday, uh, I beg your pardon, Sunday, was really sickening, very painful. We are pulling the country back, trying to make the country ungovernable from one to another to another, and you can see the fingerprint, the architect of the hands behind it. Mr. Um, Harmon, opposition leader, I'm giving you a challenge now. Try the high road of intellect. Try the high road of beauty. Try the high road of winning hearts. So even yours truly. I might get upset with them guys, the people PC. I might get upset with them. And I might come and support you. Hmm. You know, I really... I'm not a maniac for any one political party. I'm a maniac for Guyana and the people of this Guyana. All people. I truly love all people. So I'm challenging you, uh, Mr. Harmon. Stop this thing of trying to make the country ungovernable. Because people will suffer. People will not be able to eat. They will not be able to work. If they're striking, they will not get paid. Others um, will do things to inconvenience and, 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 and imprison and, and jail them if they're breaking the laws and so on. This is not good, man. You've got to show class like what we're seeing in Trinidad. Show class in Trinidad, man. And they're laughing at us. The leaders are laughing at us. They think we are like a backward set of primitives. We are like natives. You know? So to say. In symbolic language. Huh? Let us show some maturity so the Caribbean can look to us. Not when we go there, they're going to think about us. You're fighting, you're quarrelous, you're vulgar, you're destroying your, 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 your properties, your places. 
You gotta give the government a chance to please the people, to make them happy. And you show that maturity and that intellect and that wisdom, Mr. Harmon. And what will happen? Some of them will turn to you. You could win, win another election sometime, maybe in your lifetime. And as a guy means, this is my appeal to the APNU AFC, whom in my heart I still think they are my friends, but they have gone on the wrong tangent. And therefore, I have to speak against it, as I've spoken against the PPP in times past. This article, uh, Starbrook Weekend, October 4, 2020. Union not backing down from the planned health sector strike. It is taken of the Sunday, Starbrook, October 4th. Despite government's threats of sanctions against health workers who have been protesting for better benefits for those on the front line in the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Guyana Public Service Union yesterday signaled that it intends to proceed with planned industrial action this week unless its demands are met. So everything what you want, we got to go give them. It will come in tranches. The president, as soon as they took power, the president's government immediately put things in place and got budget for 150 million for equipment and opportunities and, 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 and so on. And uh, proper PPE, um, masks and uh, outfits so that they could do their job right. You gotta give the government a little credit for that. And also each home will be getting $25,000. Each home, you know. Each home. And then the children will start getting their 15,000 instead of the 10 that was pulled away by the app. Now. Wrong, man. They made some mistakes there. I told them, I wrote them, you know. I didn't, they don't listen to pe crazy people like me. And so they'll be getting that for, 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 for each one of their child, not just $15,000 for all the children, for each child in a poor country like this. Then we have free medical care in the public hospitals and institutions, some of which are better than public, than the private. Some of the public hospitals are better. And yes, the nurses de deserve more money, but they can't hold the government to ransom. The Patrick Yard, Mr. Patrick Yard, man, you know, you're supposed to be a patriot for Guyana first. Yes, you're a union leader, but then the government might decide to stop deducting fees. There's no law forcing them because you're trying to affect the government. You're trying to disaffect them from doing their jobs. And you nurses, look, doctors and nurses, you all deserve some more money, but they can't do it all at one time. This government created a budget for the next, next couple of months. 2021, there'll be another budget with much more facilities and benefits for you all. I'm sure you deserve better, but when you do things like this now, and you don't go to work, I suppose now somebody dies. The union leader might get arrested. If there's a political leader behind it, he might get arrested and charged for manslaughter. So we, 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 got, we got to think of these things. We have to think of the way forward. We have to think of saving our country and our people. Oh, gosh. So he's threatening the, 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 the industrial action until uh, they want, until the demands are met. Oh, my God, man. You know? Until they, our attorneys, say otherwise. The 72 hour ultimatum remains in place. Acting General Secretary of the GPSU, Kempton Alexander, said Sunday, told Sunday Stadbrook, while maintaining that the union has followed the necessary legal process for registering a grievance. 
but they already went on strike. They're doing that afterwards. I hope to God nobody has died because somebody's going to get charged for murder. You nurses, and you doctors, uh, you in the public service, you know the public service is not the highest paid, but regularly paid. My mother used to say, lump some money, lump some money, that's how she used to talk, right? It's better than not knowing what is coming. So you can plan your life. You can organize to budget your kitchen and your home. So you get guaranteed money, guaranteed benefits, annual leave and so on. But does not mean you should not get some more money. But the government is doing something better than that. They're trying to bring cost of living down. So you're already getting benefits. No VAT on water. No VAT on electricity. No VAT on, on, on identified food stuff. Raw material, raw foods and so on. So they're trying, you know. All of this was taken away. So they're trying. Nurses, so you'll see some more money, not as much as you want, but you'll see some more money in your pockets. But in the new year, you will definitely get some more money. And I think it is deserved. But I, me, I don't really want what I call liquid paper money, printed paper money, printed color paper call money. I want cost of living to drop. And what they plan in about three years, electricity might go to 50%. So they, they, they have focus. You can't fight them every way. Or the people will not be able to benefit. Mr. Harmon, you are trying to show that they would fail to make things difficult for the mere sake of winning the election. But you are our servant too. And you have to work for us, the people. We want peace. We want harmony, goodwill, and love in our nation. Back to the article. The union has asked for a positive response towards resolving the issue. While saying that government could negotiate on... While saying that government could negotiate on the duress, Attorney General and Landalal on Friday warned the GPSU that frontline health workers could face sanctions. And that's true, that's the law. That's the law. But we don't want that. We don't want to inconvenience anybody. Including criminal charges and determination of their work contracts. Yes, that could be done. If they continue to engage in what he maintained were illegal ongoing protests. Unless these protests act cease immediately and the procedures outlined by law are invoked, the government will have no alternative but to consider certain options, including but not limited to the institution of criminal charges, dismissal, termination of contracts, of employment, suspension of the collective labor agreement with the GPSU, and the suspension of the deduction of the union dues for and on behalf of the union. Well, I just said that. I just said that. Nandalal wrote in a letter to GPSU President Patrick Yard in the week of the threatened strike. Do we really want to go on strike as medical people and create death? Women in labor, prevent them from getting the necessary help. Our mothers, our wives, our daughters. Do we want that? Our wives, our daughters. Personally, I believe he is trying to fight fire with fire instead of trying to extinguish it. The nurses have already made up their minds to face whatever consequences come their way. So by issuing another threat, it basically just gets persons angrier. So, you know, I mean, Mr. Yard, you're saying that, but I'm telling you now, if they stay quiet and they don't retaliate, I mean, decently, by at least answering in words, you will say they're too easy, that they're a pushover. They are next to nothing, so to say.
One nurse, Janelle Lewis, told Stab Stabrook in an invited comment, okay, those are the words of her. Uh, she added that a proper response from government to be to this situation would have been to ask for a meeting and hear the nurses' concerns about what they wish to have and meet them halfway. Well, not halfway, but in tranches, maybe 10, 20 percent, and then later on again 10, 20 percent in the new year, take it up to 50. Could be done, but you can't, but you, you, you nurses too, man. You are life savers, you are life givers, and yes, you need some better conditions and benefits. But you get a guaranteed pay. Have some patience now. You all have some patience. Have some calm. Back to the article. Lewis, a nurse assigned to the cardiac intensive care unit of the Georgetown Public Hospital said she's tired as the issues being raised were problems before the pandemic and have since gotten worse. All right, but we got a pandemic now. Have some patience, we got a new government. It is uh, said that the previous government were usurping the money for fee all the things and were not giving you guys nothing. Now, the minister, former minister Jordan is saying to give the nurses something more was his idea. But, that he is blaming the former minister, Walter Lawrence, as preventing any kind of compensation or payment. If they loved the nurses so much, and most of the nurses or medical staff are their supporters, they could have given them what they wanted when they were in power. Since the start of April, some health workers of the GPHC highlighted the management by way of a letter that it had become riskier for them to come to work every day under the prevailing circumstances. And then the hospital and the ministry and the previous government and this government owe them some form of protection. They were not given protection. I mean, the doctors had to get their own guns, their own masks. I come on, man. You're all wasting so much of money, previous government, up to ARC government. You have to give these people nothing they had to buy for their, themselves. That is wrong. Totally wrong. You all should never have done something like that. They cited a case where, by following direct contact with a COVID 19 patient who subsequently died, 25 staff from the male medical ward were asked the quarantine. That's because they were not give, given the proper PPE equipment to protect themselves. Louis shared images of a medical gun that is part of her personal protective equipment and which she said had been uh, she had been asked to take home and sanitize so that it could be reused. She lamented the limited definition of a frontline worker being used by the health sector. Only persons working in the COVID-19 unit are being paid risk allowance. Other workers like myself who are in close contact with patients who are admitted to the unit and then swabbed are placed on risk when the results come back positive. With no risk allowance, many units have been complaining about not being adequately supplied with PPE. The sisters in charge of the units have to walk to various units seeking assistance for staff to function, Lewis explained. And we go to page 23. And so ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a situation of grave concern. And it is, it is not right and fair to them. And so, they use their social media to share their struggles as they fight to be hard. And the article is long, so I will, I, will, I will jump a few paragraphs. But the government and the GPHC's administration maintain that the healthcare workers fail to register grievance 
with the relevant authorities. And I'm going to skip some more paragraphs. While Alexander, that is the number two man in the um, chief in the public service union, could not remember every issue agreed on, he singled out risk allowance, stressing that while the hospital has claimed that persons who had been in contact with patients will be provided risk allowance, this is not the case. Well, he's saying they're not getting it as yet. Well, they're putting things in place, huh? Everyone working in a medical institution is a frontline worker because everybody is at risk. Okay, so now they want everybody to get risk allowance. Where do you get this money from, guys? Guyanese, opposition leader, Mr. Joseph Harmon, Patrick Yard, Mr. Alexander. Where are we getting money from? We are a poor country. We have to wait and have some patience. Everyone working in a medical institution, blah, blah, blah. The term frontline worker has to be redefined, he maintained. So everybody is a frontline worker. He went on to confirm that several nurses attached to the cardiac intensive care unit of the Georgetown Public Hospital reported sick Friday evening. So they started to report sick. He noted that while he did not have the number of nurses who participated in the sick out, he knew that the unit is usually staffed around five. With the union threatening a full-blown strike from October 7th, GPHC has moved to put measures in place to mitigate the impact. So they might have to run some skeletal staff. They might import some nurses from, maybe they have them here already, from Cuba. I was suggesting some from Haiti, some from Philippines, some from Bangladesh, even India. Some temporary come and serve and work and maybe even keep a backup permanent staff in the country of these people, some from Haiti, some from Bangladesh or whatever, and the Philippines. The Philippines are some of the most well-trained nurses. The Philippines are some of the most well-trained in human services because that is how the country is maintained. By the children and family going out to work, sending back, repatriating money back into the country. Other measures suggested included identifying the personnel who will be willing to work and facilitate medical care to persons seeking the same, rearranging staff members who are willing to provide essential services to the patients that may have been unfortunately inconvenienced by the strike actions. All patients who will not be adversely affected will be given a home care plan until the situation normalizes. He suggested in the memo, well, okay, so some of them might go home and they get a plan how to help themselves. In the absence of nurses in clinic areas, the wards of the operating room, doctors, will be asked to assist with basic interventions like medication, dispensation, vital signs and dressing on patients who for one reason or the other could not discharge or refer to another institution for care. Teams should be created with the available personnel to identify who will be responsible for which duties to allow for patient care to continue in crisis mode. The memo further added. Family members are also likely to be called on to assist with visitation to be eliminated except for family members attempting to remove their patients from the hospital and a willing relative who will assist with the care of the patients remaining. The care is to include showering, feeding, and other physiological needs. The government is trying. Till now, they have not threatened or they have not fired anybody. They are not saying that they will use some Cubans, but it's not a bad idea. And I'm suggesting some Haitians and maybe some people from Bangladesh to have a standby for the time being. And it, ladies and gentlemen, my viewpoint is that in time, and my vision, a time will come when we will become so independent that we will have to bring nurses from overseas and our nurses will probably specialize or become supervisors and administrators. And we bring in the frontline and other uh, hospital staff and also same thing in the GPSU 
where we would turn the bosses and like in Dubai, United Arab Emirates um, and so on, uh, Arabia and so on, so that they will work, we will be the bosses and we will have our cars and our home and our, our system to survive and live happily with our children and joyful. This is the vision. This is the vision that I have, having been a traveler. And this is the vision I think Dr. President Dr. Irfan Ali has. And uh, Brigadier Mark Phillips, Prime Minister Mark Phillips, and uh, Dr. Barajak, the Vice President. Ladies and gentlemen, give the people a chance to fix this country. And Mr. Harmon, work as a brother partner of the nation Guyana. Help our country to prosper. The more troubles you cause to create non-governance by the government, is the more you're destroying yourself. Can somebody out there who is an um, APNO AFC lover or friend tell them this, what I'm telling them? Can they tell them this? that you are disorienting yourself, distancing yourself from the people whose heart you should win in order to win a future election. So that is the article, ladies and gentlemen. I, I condensed it somewhat. Your friend, your brother, me, Haji, Dr. Roshan Khan, say thank you for tuning in and farewell, friend.